metabolic adaptation. It's concerning to women because I guess, you know, maintaining muscle mass is particularly hard, especially with the hormonal shifts. You've noted somewhere, I, I was doing a lot of research and you noted that a 25% calorie deficit is effective. So in your experience, how does a 25% calorie deficit specifically help mitigate metabolic adaptation in menopausal women compared to a more aggressive dieting strategy? What my lab has done over my career, I would say we've done, we've specialized in helping people lose weight and making that weight loss about 100% from body fat stores and maintaining lean mass. So that's what my lab has done. My research, as I alluded to earlier, is mostly in younger, metabolically healthy people. I have yet to do research in menopausal women with all of the same strategies. My fear is, because of the thousands of communications that I've received from women, probably train wrecks, who are telling me, I'm doing everything right and I still can't lose weight. I'm, di I'm doing a 25% caloric deficit. Now, I know that wasn't your question, but I just want to say everything I'm talking about now, I admit it may not apply to this certain specific population at a certain phase of life, which is the perimenopausal transition in certain women. Can't cite evidence. That evidence doesn't exist. But I've had too many communication points from women who've tracked every macro, who've tracked every workout, who tell me this, and I have two choices. I can either think they're lying or I can trust them. If they weren't coming at it from a fitness perspective, bodybuilders, um, personal trainers themselves, fitness professionals, I would tend to not believe them and say, you're just not tracking adequately. But these aren't the, I, I don't perceive these are the type of women that that would be an appropriate response for me or an appropriate response. So I just want to, I want to put them to the side because I, it may not apply to them. For everybody else, what we've learned over the years is that a 25% caloric deficit seems to be a really good sweet spot in the sense that as long as you're resistance training and getting optimal protein intake, 25% caloric deficit allows for nearly all of the of the body tissue loss to come from fat tissue and it maintains all of the lean mass. And again, we've published several studies using this model, um, resistance training, relatively high protein, and almost all of the weights coming from fat mass. Um, in terms of metabolic adaptation, we typically don't see that at all if you maintain muscle mass. Um, and let me define metabolic adaptation. Metabolic adaptation is where when you lose weight, well, actually, let me take one step back. When you lose weight in general, your metabolism slows down. Just like if you gain weight, your metabolism will go up. Your metabolism is a function of the current size of your body. If you have a smaller body, you're going to have a, a, your metabolism will lower. If you have a larger body, your metabolism will go up because it has more tissue that it has to feed or, or, or function. Metabolic adaptation is when your metabolism slows down more than what we would predict from losing weight alone. And effectively, that's very much determined, it, it appears, by how much lean mass you lose when you go on a diet. And this 25% seems to be fast enough where you're losing body fat, but not so aggressive that you're losing lean mass. And therefore, if you're not losing lean mass, at least in my research that, and again, all this is published, when you don't lose lean mass, your the metabolic rates that we've tracked also do not go down. Even if they lose 10, 15 pounds of body fat, metabolism still stays relatively stable because they've maintained their muscle mass. But they've maintained their muscle mass through effective exercise or through protein intake? I, yeah, I was going to say both. One, the diet hasn't been aggressive, so they weren't crash dieting, and they were resistance training, and they had optimal protein intake. And, and I'll, I'll explain this in a little story because I think this really summarizes it well. 
When you reduce your calories, that is inducing a catabolic environment on your body. And a catabolic environment, so catabolic means breaking down. That's a great environment for for fat. We want a catabolic environment because that's how we lose fat. But it's not a good environment for, for trying to build or maintain lean mass. We don't want a catabolic environment. So we effectively, what, what I try to conceptualize is when we're in a diet and our bodies are in this catabolic environment, what are things we can do to introduce anabolic stimuli into our lives or into our bodies during this overall catabolic phase? And the two things that are anabolic that we can introduce are resistance exercise. That's an anabolic stimulus to the body, specifically to skeletal muscle and what nutrient is anabolic to the body? Protein. So it's we're, effectively, we're just giving our body bursts of anabolic stimuli in an otherwise catabolic environment. And it appears though, as you know, if you're, if you're doing this effectively, it's enough to maintain the lean mass. It's enough of an anabolic stimulus to keep the muscle that you had when you started the diet.